Yeah, hi guys, welcome, welcome back. This is part two uh, video from the uh, cooling modifications that I did uh, recently. If you haven't seen that video, uh, in that video I talk about all the modifications I've been doing to the car to, to aid for more power. So basically what I'm trying to do is add more power to the car by making it more efficient and uh, making, it, making it a lot cooler uh, on track effectively. That's what I've been trying to do. So I made lots of changes to the car. Not all of them. There's eight changes that I've that I've that I have on on my schedule to do. Uh, but I haven't done all of them. Uh, the video talks about uh, which ones I, I've actually done. And then this video is all about uh, the results of those changes because I've I've done. I want to test in increments like how effective these these changes are. So with that, let's have a look at some of the some of the data so here i'm using race studio analysis by aim technologies i've got a lot of data uh, that goes back months and months so i've got data that goes on track and on road because i haven't taken the car on track yet since i've done these changes all of these comparisons i'm going to show you today are purely on the road and the data sets that I'm comparing are like for like or as close as possible, meaning the demands in resources on the car, so the amount of power demand, boost pressure, the ambient temperature, the duration of the drive, uh, and the fact that I'm not just sat in traffic. All of those things have been taken on board and I'm, and I'm comparing them. So what I'm gonna do first, I've got quite a lot of few data sets to show you, but the first one I'm gonna do is show is low speed uh, post uh, cooling and pre cooling. So, this is a relatively small data set, which is about a minute or two minutes long. Film this was uh, recorded on se September the 24th. Ambient temperatures was about 20, 21 degrees Celsius. This one, which was recorded on the July 19th, again, similar ambient temperature, similar time. Now, if we open the two data sets, what Ray Studio Analysis does. I've set it up so that it allows me to align the two data, data sets on top of each other so I can see them. So if you're not familiar with this tool, I'll just quickly go over some of the some of the things that you're looking at here because it may not make much sense unless you're familiar with this tool. So you can see there are many sensors or metrics, if you will, that I've picked here. Uh, so I've got wastegate position is not really that important, but we've got a throttle site, so where the throttle pedal is. Uh, target boost pressure, so the demand on what what the, the the boost that you're getting, the speed, how fast we're actually going, manifold pressure, how much pressure is actually going in, into the inlet manifold, the fuel level, which is which is uh, which is interesting because of fuel heats up, and I have done cooling around fuel, uh, the ECT temperature, so that's the coolant temperature, and then we've got the air intake temperature. On the left-hand side here, this is important. This, this te when it says tests loaded, what it means is that I've picked the two different tests and they're in sequential order. So whatever you see here on the right-hand side, so this, all of this here, corresponds to the order of the tests here. So in other words, this this one here, zero nine zero five, low speed post cooling. This one refers. So these. These here, these these values at the top of the top row, corresponds to uh, the post cooling. This one corresponds to the pre cooling. Right, so it's you got to remember which way around they are because sometimes you can be looking at data in different ways, in the wrong way actually. So anyway, the air intake temperature. So that if you watch the video that I talked about that I did last. I talked about two things. One, I want to lower the intake temperatures to increase inlet manifold. Right, they kind of go come hand in hand in glove, if you will. And then the engine temperature. So the coolant temperature is the only thing I can actually manage at the moment or see at the moment. So they are the two major objectives uh, to, to lower both of them. And you can see here, this blue icon shows the current timeline, the current actual position on the data set that I have to be clicked on. So I can pick any type, any section of this, of these, diff, these this data set. And so this, 
this, this is not important for this particular video with these two numbers here but just so you know that that's what that means the blue the blue icon here um, this is the the minimum right the red one is the maximum and the white one is the average now we care about these two the the, the maximum and and the average in fact well the average is most important and then it's the the maximum you can see so let's talk about these numbers then so the air intake bear in mind i've done a lot of work around the intake system like cooling it look at the difference here the maximum on the post cooling is 33.1 degrees celsius right whereas the maximum pre-cooling is 62.2 that's a pretty pretty massive difference that's eight actually 87 percent improvement um which is quite it's quite staggering in this particular data set. Not, not all the data sets are this are this good. Uh, I'll show this difference in. I can show you a few others, uh, but in this particular data set, this is this is about the maximum difference. And of course, there will be differences because you can't. These tests are not absolutely one hundred percent identical. There are differences. You know, it, it, it's a question of did I slow the car down right before on the on the post cooling you know so the or did i um was the was there more airflow going into the radiator or going into the intake system on the you know there, there was you gotta you gotta look at lots of different data sets and take the average that's the way to look at it and the average is uh 28 degrees on the post cooling and 44.2 on the on the pre-cooling so that's a a 57 percent improvement which is which is staggering. I, I never thought that it would be this good. Uh, and if you watch that video, you'll you'll see why. You know, I I've created a, a turbo um, a turbo heat shield, top of down type heat shield. I did a lot of work with the exhaust, and then so we move on to the coolant temperature. Uh, the max is eighty nine point eight, and the uh, for the uh, post cooling and uh, pre cooling is ninety ninety four point nine. So not not much to write home about here. I mean, that's a 5.6% improvement and exactly the same for uh, the average, 88.6 for uh, the average for the post cooling and then 93.6 for average. But, you know, the way to look at this is if I can lower by, if I can lower coolant temperatures by, you know, almost 6%, uh, then that's, that, that's, that's good for me because I want to get below 100 on track. So six percent would actually give me that. Would give me a. I'll be below a hundred degrees on track, assuming I did nothing else. You know, the the oil cooler would make a huge difference here, I believe, and the oil cooler has not been installed yet. So the intake temperature is definitely the the improvement, the max, the the biggest improvement. Uh, whereas the 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 actual engine temperature is, you know, there, there's a bit of improvement, um, but but not a not a massive improvement. Okay, so the next next different uh, data set that I've, I've been looking at here is uh, what I call a, a longish run, longish, longish fast run. So it's on a private road, uh, on the road, so not on the track. And you can see here the two different data sets here. Uh, this one is on Friday, 24th September. Temperature was slightly higher, 22, 23 degrees, something like that it was. Um, and it's 12 minutes long. And this one was, uh, I don't remember the date of this one, actually. I think it was July 19th, something like that. It doesn't, that's not important, but the temperature is pretty similar. And this was a 20 minute run. And if you look at the the speed display, or this is a private road, almost identical look, 129 miles per hour on the post uh, cooling and 129 miles per hour on the pre-cooling. Uh, and the timeline is 11 minutes. Now, if we look at the first, the intake temps, we're seeing a pretty significant difference between the two. So the average for the post cooling is 35 degrees. And then the average is 42.3. Given that the, the scenario is very similar, the same demand on power. In fact, <laughs> for some reason, the, I seem to be a lot more aggressive on uh, on the post cooling one here actually with terms of throttle 
and, and target boost pressure. Uh, so the, there's slightly more higher demand on the post cooling data set than the than the pre cooling one, but but it's not that it's not a massive difference, but there is a difference. So you can see here there's quite a significant difference. The maximum here is 69.4, which is similar to the track actually. That's sort of similar to track temperatures, uh, and then 61 uh, is the maximum on on the post cooling. Now I don't fully understand why that's so high actually. Because if I click here, it jumps to the it snapshots where where in the data set uh, the uh, the why uh, that specific moment where when it went up to that temperature, and at that time, if you look at oh, it's because I stopped actually. Yeah, speed. See the speed display look zero miles per hour. So that's heat soak. Um, that's just heat coming out of the the turbo probably. Um, so you can see there, it's zero miles per hour, which is why it went up to 61. If I click there, 69, uh, what is that speed? Okay, 37.9, that's interesting. So the car was moving. So when the car's moving, the intake temperature should drop, right, naturally, because you've got airflow. And I see that on track at the end of a very last, a very fast straight. The air intake temperature goes goes right goes right down uh, on on the straight at full power at full speed. The minute you come to the first corner and you slow right down, the air, the, the 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 air intake balloons increases massively. Now, what's not quite so pleasing is the ECT temps are pretty much not no change in this particular example. Uh, but again, like I said before. You've got to take multiple data sets and take the average. Uh, so there's, we're seeing on the previous data set, there was a like 5% difference in coolant temperature, but a massive in intake. So you can see there's pretty significant difference here on the intake temperature versus the, uh, um, you know, the same as what it was before, uh, but still a, quite a significant improvement that you, you wouldn't say no to. But the ECD temps are, yeah, not that impressive. What is impressive, and I think this is a direct reflection of the intake, is the manifold pressure is much higher. Uh, so it's over two PSI higher. And I've seen this out of all the data sets I looked at. Since doing these modifications, I'm getting a much higher inlet manifold pressure, which is one of my objectives. It's now nearly 25 PSI. I, I never get that. I've never got that even on track of all the data I looked at it's never never gone this high uh, it's always around about here which is this pre-cooling one 22 you know 22.4 so overall I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with this uh, the maximum throttle pedal is 12 it's not full throttle but it's close uh, but again this is on the road remember yeah so this is this is a fast, a fast longish run. So the third test is just an average run, just a, just an average run. I've got the the uh, the post cooling uh, was the twenty fourth of September, twenty one twenty two degrees again, and this was a four minute four minute run, and then the other one is seventeenth of July, same sort of temperature, uh, two minutes. Right. So if you look at the Air intake again. It's a similar similar deal as all the other tests. 33 average uh, uh, post cooling, 42.9 pre cooling, and then likewise for the for the the peak is 43.4 for the for the peak on post cooling and 53.3 on the on the pre cooling, and then the minimum you can see the minimum is much it's very low compared to. Uh, the 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 pre the the pre cooling uh, same with the ECT again it's eighty nine point one average for the post cooling and then uh, on this particular data set it's uh, ninety four point six uh, for the pre cooling so so I mean overall I'm not super happy with the engine coolant temperature uh, it's made a bit of a difference but it's not a huge amount. Like I said, it's about 6% difference. If you look at 
on average all the data sets which is going to help on track i want a bit more than that and i think that's where the oil cooler when i got the oil, oil cooler installed i'll do this test these tests again because i want to do it in increments i want to test the difference uh, the different things in increments so the fourth and final comparison is is i wanted to see the difference between uh, the front air duct prototype uh, that i that I, I made out of cardboard it's pretty pretty rudimentary making it out of cardboard but it but it at least allows me to test it and see if there's any impact in using you know cardboard before i actually make a proper air duct so i'll show a photo of, of what, what i did if you if you haven't seen the video but um since so the cardboard basically for, uh, enables the it forces the air to channel into the into into the air duct at the front of the car because atom 4 has an air duct unlike the old cars uh, that forces air it has a front air duct it doesn't have a rear air duct it has a front one that, that funnels air into the radiator to go th it forces it through the radiator so the issue is when you've got wings I mean if you don't have wings um, what can happen is air will hit the bottom part lip of the entry to the to, to the opening in fact it's worse when you've got wings because there's a mount in the in the in the way and air can actually go under the wing so you're going to lose a lot of a lot of the uh a lot of the airflow uh, going into the, into the radiator that would normally go into the radiator it's probably about i don't know 15 percent if you if you work out the size the, the gap difference it's about a 15 percent loss of, of airflow potentially uh, so what i've done here is and I only I only got to test this once because I've, I'm out of fuel now, uh, and I have been since the 25th of September when people went crazy and started panic buying petrol in the UK. So I can't actually fill the car up and do any more testing at the moment. But so basically, this top one was the 25th of September. It was pretty hot outside that day. It's actually 25 degrees. Uh, that was a really warm day. Uh, the other so these this top one is it was 18 minutes i went out for uh and you can see my fuel level actually it's 20 on that run so it's 20 20 percent so the fuel lights come on and this one was 20 the day before which was cooler a lot cooler it's about 21 22 degrees there's a big difference between 21 degrees 22 degrees and 25 as soon as you get as soon as you start getting to 25 26 27 the car gets so much hotter like much more rapidly so if we look at the data this first one and and of course these aren't exactly the same because um the the actual the first test with, with, with the air duct in place i gave the car a pretty good thrashing you can see top speed of 111 miles per hour the second test is quite quite high as well 129 if you look at the air intake temps it's actually down on uh, it's on average it's 32.3 so the air intake temperature is quite dramatically reduced and I'm not entirely sure why that would be uh, it could be because the coolant lines are cool cooler in the turbo I don't know um, there is a lot of coolant lines around the turbo and around the intake that I haven't wrapped. You know, you can't wrap all of them. So that could have a bearing because it's quite a significant, there's three degree difference between the two here. This one, the third test is 33 degrees average, which is only one degree more than, or less than one degree more than the air duct. But if you look at that test, it's, I was just cruising along like 49 miles per hour um the demands on on uh target boost where's the target boost i'm not sure why that's not showing let's see if i can fix this take that off Off. right 
Yeah, so target boost on the last one is, is the same. So it's the target boost is pretty similar. Throttle pedal is the maximum is, is 10. It's quite a big difference between 13 and 10. So I was quite close to full throttle on the on the air duct test, whereas the third one, um, I'm kind of two thirds of the way to full throttle. So there's a difference there. But bear in mind, the the temperature was way higher on the first test. So, th and if you look at ECT, it's 89.1 on that on that third test, where I was just kind of cruising. Uh, it's 89.4, so it's hotter uh, with the air duct in place. But but of course, you've got to look at the data sets. They're not completely identical because I don't have enough data on this yet. And that's the issue, really, to compare this. But I think this is going to help um, because these two, the two top ones are close, much closer. So it's, it's not a massive difference, but it's one degree difference. You know, so it's more than 1% difference, 1.2% uh, difference between, 1.1% difference between, uh, you know, the, the, the having the air duct or uh, and, and not having it. So I think it definitely, definitely helps, but I just need to test it more. So I will go ahead and make a proper, a proper air duct out of, out of one mil uh, mild steel and then paint it and get it fitted and do some more testing. But yeah, I think, so, so far I'm happy with the results. I think it will, of course, when you get on track, everything multiplies. So this is a really good snapshot to see the differences between these four different tests. When you get on track, of course, things multiply by 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 a significant margin. So it's definitely improving, that's for sure. At least it's going down and not not up. That's the, or at least it's going down, and not staying the same, which would have been you know, or even going up, which would have been a not good scenario. Now I, I think I hope you found this useful. Cheers.